Oh, you've got to love Thundercats. Everybody loved Thundercats. It was an 80s cartoon classic. Oh, I loved the show. It was just the fact that Lino was a complete numpty. Yeah, he could be a bit of a catastrophe. Yeah. I think it was the fact that he was essentially a kid trapped in a man's body and so would often do the stupidest things, get himself in trouble and have to wait for his friends to bail him out all wrapped up in some loose fitting moral. Every darn episode. What's going on, Lionel? Oh, snarf! Snarf, we're almost late for tea. Oh, snarf, snarf. Well, Schnarf, we have two options. We can go down the safe but long pathway of Safer Zonia, or we can go down the obviously doomed dangerous woods of Danger Mathia. It's a shortcut, and I am rather hungry. Oh, Schnarf, the woods don't look safe, Lion. Oh, Schnarf! I see your point, Schnarf, but I don't really care what you have to say. Thundercats are going through the dangerous deadly woods of doom. I hate to say it, Schnarf, but we're lost. And we're probably going to die. Oh, for snarf sake, snarf! Now, with such a great storyline and awesome well-loved characters, you'd expect it to be one heck of a great video game, wouldn't you? Well, not really, considering it's on this list, Meladio. <laughs> Quite. Especially when the whole game consists of you bustling midgets and bats. Yeah, everyone remembers that classic episode where Lionel spent the whole show going around beating up bats and midgets. Repetitively travelling across the same constantly barren levels all rounded off in one climatic battle against Mumra in the final level. Which doesn't ever happen. The game just ends. Then again, the game's so impossibly hard, they probably couldn't be bothered to create a massive Mumra boss battle at the end of the game, as no one be able to get that far anyway. It's one of those games where the screen's so littered with enemies, it's practically impossible not to get hit in the game. Mainly because the developer thought it was more humane to kill you off early than to subject you to the boredom of later levels. So I'd personally like to thank Elite for ruining such a fond childhood memory of mine. But then again, you're developing mobile phone games now, so that's a fitting punishment for you. Thundercats are going to number six. Hello and welcome to the Ad Break Questionarium. We've got a question this time that'll really make your brain boggle. That and test your mind. Can you guess which is the biggest selling game of all time? Answer after the break. Oh, oh, excuse me. Welcome back to the show. You just caught me enjoying a scotch egg over the break. Did you guess what the biggest selling game of all time is? If you answered the Xbox title Steel Battalion, you are indeed correct. I mean, look at the size of the box it comes in. It's freaking humongous. Especially compared to the size of Super Mario Bros. NES box. That's barely large on the DVD case. Thanks for playing and see you next time on Outbreak Questionarium. Quite a special nomination for number five, as we've not got one game for this position, but an entire lineage of the franchise. Although we're massive fans of South Park, a bad game will always be a bad game, and a claim proof just that by trying to cash in with their South Park trilogy. The first in the series, deeply impacted, later imaginatively retitled South Park the Game, cautions one of the four boys, Derek, Dan, Lyle and Kimmy, as they throw hilarious yellow snowballs at turkeys, which loses its comedic value after about the first throw. Which is made even worse when you consider this game was made by the same team who made Turok, and later the Metroid Prime series. They even left the annoying closed fog from Turok, so you can't see four feet in front of you, and that's even if you use the expansion pack on the N64. So how do I claim full up such an all-time classic? By releasing a stupid quiz show game, a genre renowned for its limited amount of gameplay, with Chef's Love Shack. A title consisting of about three questions that repeat ad nauseum and mini games that wouldn't be seen dead outside of a late 70s arcade. And in the single player, they ramp up the fun by not having any opponents to play against whatsoever. So, even if you're in the minus points at the end of the game, you still win. Yay! And the final title to round up this tripology was South Park Rally. While South Park Rally wasn't a terrible game and the best of a bad bunch, it was basically a clone of Mario Kart and wasn't enough to save them from making their way onto the list. 
and so South Park animates its way onto number five. What a merciless... You can tell we're getting closer to number one now by the absolute stench of the final four. And Celebrity Deathmatch really kicks up a stink. It's quite ironic naming a game Celebrity Deathmatch when there's not exactly that many celebrities in it to begin with. What are you talking about? There's plenty of A-listers like Mr T, Marilyn Manson, Ron Jeremy, Tommy Lee, Cousin Grimm and Paul Vale. <laughs> wow, an all studded lineup then. Celebrity Deathmatch is plagued by poor animation, limited samey moves and none of the over-the-top aspects of the show for which it's infamous. Combine it with the fact that nearly all the finishing moves of the game comprise of some sort of ironic heavy object falling on their opponent, and it makes for an utterly bland, uninspiring beat em up that'll leave you feeling like you've been hit below the belt. Celebrity Deathmatch makes its way into number four, so good night, good fight and goodbye. We have a winner! What's all this then, Ricky? Somebody's made a blooming East Enders game and not given me any royalties. I'm gonna give someone a slap for this one. Puh! You weren't even in East Enders when this game came out, Frank. Plus, you're dead now. What the heck are you gonna do with royalties? You wanna be Angus Kids, ain't ya? Ooh, I'm running the car lock from beyond the grave. Ooh. Oh, just get on with it. <laughs> yup, it's another BBC license on our list that very few people know exists. So much so that there's absolutely nothing about this game on the whole of the internet whatsoever, other than it exists. Now that's probably a good thing on this occasion, it's an absolute stinker. Before you even start the game, you'll see how messed up it is. I mean, who on earth thought it would be a good idea to use the W, A, S and Z keys to move your character? It's the equivalent of playing finger twister on your keyboard. And after you've managed to give yourself arthritis getting around the insane control system, you'll discover it's got the most stupid plot ideas ever. As in, there isn't one. For some unexplained reason, the entire population of Warford is missing from the game. No idea why, it's not even in the instruction book. As a sole member of Albert Square, you need to manage everything. Cleaning clothes in the laundrette. Pulling pints at the Queen Vic. Taxing around what appears to be Hampton Court maze. Restocking the world's largest fruit and veg stall from the local supermarket and making sure Albert Square's triffid like plants don't grow to the top of the screen or they'll kill you. Oh, well, don't forget the greatest mini game of all constantly emptying this bedridden old woman's colostomy bag. There's a good reason that no one's heard of this game and it's probably because our decent society eradicated it so our future generations won't have to be subjected to its crippling controls, lackluster gameplay, and non existent plotline. No one in their right mind should go looking for this title, and should they be stupid enough to do so, they deserve to be killed off in an over-elaborate Christmas Day special. And that's why it ends up at number three. I just heard that Idos just bought the rights to make an all-new EastEnders game ripping off The Sims. Hang on, you're not Pat! 